Hi, this is Jeff Curto, and welcome to episode number five of Camera Position, a podcast about the creative side of photography. Today I'd like to talk about another one of my photographs, uh, this one made in uh, rural Tuscany of uh, a group of sheep, uh, pecore as the Italians would say, and um, boy, these, these sheep in the uh, morning hours, I was uh, staying in a, a farmhouse out in the middle of nowhere in the uh, wilds of Tuscany, and uh, it was not a place where it was able, I was able to uh, sleep late uh, because uh, the sheep would uh, be driven by the shepherds uh, up over the, the hill, uh, just a little bit to the left of the picture space here, at about 5.30 every morning, and every sheep has a bell around its neck, so it would be a a gentle but uh, and and quite beautiful but uh, early uh, morning every morning. Uh, as I watched these animals, uh, one of the things that I was really fascinated by was the way in which they followed one another. Uh, it seemed as though one sheep would uh, would uh, move and the others would would follow behind, uh, and I was interested in the fact that they seemed to make these sort of trails through uh, through the uh, the space uh, trails that only they were defining and so what I did was as I began to make photographs and I made many images of which this is the really the only one that was even reasonably successful in my mind the other images didn't work at least in part because that sense of movement wasn't really captured uh, or my uh, composition really didn't quite work out in terms of the way the sheep moved through the space. It was really about that movement of sheep, movement of these paths of sheep through the space and the way light and shadow interacted. I loved that big giant shadow cast by the huge tree this in this early morning light. And I, I made a, a whole lot of photographs, and as I made photographs I realized that uh, making a still photograph of these animals was not really going to work very well. What I needed was something that allowed the movement of the animals through space you know, to, to, to be the creative element in the photograph. I've always been fascinated with uh, moving things in still photographs, with blurred motion in photographs. has always been something that's been very interesting to me. So uh, what I found was that if I made some exposures, and of course I'm, you know, not really able to tell exactly what these things look like until much later, but I found that as I made some exposures um, that were in the half second to one second to two second range, that what I got was enough blurred motion to give this sense of these animals moving in a sort of almost stream or river-like fashion. And uh, then when when printing this photograph at a later time, uh, I manipulate the image in such a way that the uh, the trails of the sheep are even somewhat more apparent by making sure that those sheep are kept quite light um, relative to the surrounding area, uh, especially relative to the grasses in the foreground and the trees in the background so that uh, we perceive these ribbons of white uh, light. So it was really a situation of thinking through the process of photography, the technology of photography, but really using that technology to visualize in my mind's eye the way the photograph would look once it was completed. In a sense, using that old idea of pre-visualization conceived by Weston and Adams to think through the process of how technology affects the way we can say and do things in photography. As a sort of an end note uh, to this podcast episode, um, not necessarily photographic, but in a way I think it probably is, uh, the uh, group that I was staying with, um, uh, eventually of course we became not a, friends necessarily, but acquainted with the shepherds who were driving these sheep around, and uh, it was kind of interesting. They they had uh, named each and every one of them, which is sort of surprising given the large number of sheep that appear in this in this big group, uh, this big herd. Uh, but uh, 
Toward the end of the week that we were staying in this particular place, uh, the shepherds uh, decided that they would uh, butcher and roast uh, one of the uh, youngest of the sheep, one of the lambs, for us. And of course, that ensued a, a conversation of well over an hour about uh, which of the uh, which of the flock would be the best uh, best one to eat. Uh, you know, was it little uh, Maria uh, who? Uh, would be the sweetest, or or would it be Claudia who would be the sweetest of the of the sheep? So, so I think if there is a nugget of photographic truth in this story, uh, the end part of this story about the shepherds and the sumptuous meal that they prepared, it is that photographs are about transitory experience. They capture a moment of the present, but always preserve it as a part of the past. All photographs, I think, are about the past. They are about uh, a moment that is gone and not to be relived, but can be frozen in time through the photographic document. So what we have in this photograph is a moment that is about time. It's about the passage of time in front of the camera's lens, and it's about the passage of time in terms of how this ancient tradition of herding the sheep and caring for the uh, animals of the land uh, can be captured in a photographic document. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Camera Position. I appreciate those of you who have written in. I'm looking forward to hearing from more of you. Uh, certainly uh, feel free to give me a, uh, drop me a note, let me know uh, what you think about Camera Position and any suggestions for improvement uh, or a change that might appeal to you. I'd be more than happy to hear about. Send me a note at jeff at jeffcurto.com or jeff at cameraposition.com. Until next time, keep shooting.